Hey, what's going on guys, Jake here again, and today I'm actually going to be doing a how-to tutorial, finally, for the people who are asking for it, how to build a PC. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the intro real quick, and then we'll go ahead and go over some of the parts. Alrighty guys, what's going on? Welcome back, and here we are with the parts. Now, for the motherboard, I'm going to have a Gigabyte Z77X D3H. You can find an unboxing of this on my channel. It's actually my old motherboard, as well as my old processor, which is going to be the i7-3770K. These are both LGA 1155 sockets. Very, very good processor. Overclocked it myself with four cores, eight threads because of the hyper-threading. For storage, they are going to have a 128 gig A data SSD for their boot drive. For normal storage, they're going to have a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. For the liquid cooler, which is going to seem a little bit crazy, a Corsair H75, just because that core, that i7 might be running a little hot sometimes. For RAM, we have four gigs of Ballistics Sport by Crucial. For the power supply. We have a 500 watt 80 plus bronze by EVGA. And for the graphics card, we have a brand new EVGA GeForce GTX 960 Super Super Clocked for all of their HD viewing and streaming needs. Now, instead of the parts, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the build. What you have to do, what you're going to need, some of which should come with your case, I hope, and the rest will come with your power supply and other accessories that you're gonna need. We'll go ahead and skip right into installing the motherboard and the processor. Alrighty guys, so the IO shield here is a pain in the ass. Just make sure you have it centered the correct way. So right now, the audio is going to be on the bottom, everything else is going to be lined up. So if you tilt the case on its other side, you'll be able to read everything directly. The IO shield has little metal bumps in the border around it that need to slap into place in the case. Now it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, it takes a little bit of patience, and as soon as you hear it click, then you should be good to go. For the motherboard tray, this is what we're going to be looking at. This is a very, very simple layout of any case. For me, it's the NZXT Phantom 410. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of paper down real quick that's going to show you the layout of each standoff and each screw. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Now that's where they are. They are little black standoffs that you can see kind of poking up just right there. I'm going to go ahead and bring the motherboard in. I'm slowly going to bring it down, line it up with the IO shield first, and then begin to make sure that the screws are where they need to be, or the standoffs are where they need to be. As soon as that's done, I actually made a little bit of a mistake here with the rear IO shield because it wasn't entirely snapped into place, as it's kind of obvious to tell. There's a little tiny corner sticking out just right there. As soon as you fix that, then you should be good to go. Take your nine screws that should come with your case and a Phillips screwdriver. Put each screw in its spot. I'm going to go ahead and count them off in just a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and just drop that one in the bottom corner. It's a good spot. Now let's see. I'll go ahead and count them in just a second after I fix that pesky IO shield. There's one in the corner. Let's see. Am I going to go ahead and count them? Am I going to go ahead and count them? I picked one up because I dropped it. Oh well, that's all right. No big deal. And go ahead and put the screw in that bottom one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is in that top right corner. Now, for the RAM, your motherboard slots for your or your DIMMs are going to have particularly laid out slots. So just open one up, line up the pins on the stick and in the motherboard, and go ahead and slide it in, push it closed until the tabs close on themselves. Do it for the second stick and I space them apart because it's dual channel RAM and it gets the best speed out of each stick. For installing the CPU, if you're facing the motherboard, take the processor. There will be a little golden triangle on the bottom left. First you want to move that arm up and out, that retention arm, and then that entire bracket will swing up as I'm showing you guys now. Make sure that little golden triangle is on the very bottom so you can read the text on the CPU. Go ahead and bring that bracket back down. Make sure it goes underneath the screw that's implanted in the motherboard directly in front of the CPU, bring the arm underneath and lock it and you're good to go. 
For the stock CPU cooler, we're not actually going to be using it. We have a liquid cooler installed, but for this particular one, all you have to do is put each one in the hole above your processor, snap it in into place with each one, and turn it into the direction where the arrow is pointing, connect it to the CPU fan header, and you're all good to go. Now for something that I mistook is that when I was trying to install the liquid cooler, I misplaced that um, I would need to install the 8-pin power connector first. So this is where you go ahead and slide your power supply into the back of the case, shouldn't be any problem. There will be four screws that will come with it and go ahead and put them in the back and then you can do whatever you want with the rest of the cables and route them however the heck you want. For the front panel connectors, now this is going to be a little bit of a messy shot here. You're going to have USB, which I'm showing you now, a little kind of a rough angle. And then you're going to have power connectors for the power LED, the power switch, the hard drive LED, and the reset switch, all that good stuff. Now those connectors are going to depend on what your motherboard says to connect them to. But I just connected to the USB right there, and there will be another one that say HD audio or front audio, and you're going to connect that to the other connector. Now, if your case has USB 3.0, it's going to be a blue connector that's going to look something like this. And one of the corners, the corner that I'm blurrily pointing out to right now, does not have a pin. Now, you're going to go ahead and look on the connector. It should be center on the right side of your motherboard. Line everything up and snap it right into place, and you should be good to go for USB 3.0. For the graphics card, all you have to do is find your PCI lane just like this. Get your graphics card. I'm going to go ahead and show you. It's not going to be a great angle. Go ahead and show yourself. There it is. That's where you're going to be sliding it into. Look from the top down. It's the best view. Slide it in. You will hear a click from a locking mechanism that's going to lock the graphics card into place, but you will have to use the two screws on the back PCI um, expansion slots to really secure the graphics card in its place. Four SATA connectors. Now this was my fault. Now I did my SATA connectors after the graphics card, was a, which was a mistake because this graphics card is a little bit longer than anything else. Go ahead and take the SATA connectors, route them through wherever you'd like if you have grommets like this. Just line up the L on the connector and the input and you're all good to go. Now for the hard drive installs, what we're going to get to now it's very, very simple depending on what case, right? Here I have a sled that can clearly just slide right out, no pun intended. I'm going to go ahead and take the drive, make sure that the connector, the power connector and the real connector are just like that. Now go ahead and make a very, very simple installation. It's all secure. Now you can go ahead and slide it right back in. Now I did have a little bit of trouble because it's a wider drive. So earlier I got it in, but that's that. Now for your SSD mount. This is just in um, a particular case. So here I have the SSD. What I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be taking some simple fasteners. They're almost Velcro. I'm going to put one at the top and I'm going ahead and slide that off right there and then one at the bottom. Now it's going to be a little uneven. You're going to kind of tell. There we go. The fasteners are all good to go. Make sure those two L-shaped connectors are facing the back just like this. I have a little pesky piece of Velcro that was on there from the other SSD. So I'm just going to take that off right now and kind of move the case around and blah, blah, blah. And it's bad. It was pretty bad. But go ahead and take the SSD. Just drop it right in there. Make sure it's level with the back if you'd like to. That way the connectors can make full contact and you don't have to worry about anything like that. And you're good to go. For connecting power, simply take your SATA connectors. They are going to look like L's. They're a little bit elongated. There you are right there. There's a good shot. Go ahead and make match that L with the L that is on the hard drive um, disk drive uh, or SSD and you're good to go. There's one connected and I'm going to go ahead and take the other one. Mark up that L. I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the Western Digital Drive and then we're all good to go. Now we can do that for all of your SATA or Molex devices. And you're all good to go. Now for the fan. This was just something last minute that I did in the very front. Um, I had a little bit of a mix up. This is just simple airflow fan that I wanted to install. I could put two up there, but I only have this one left because the other ones are being used in my new build. Just go ahead and throw that up there. I'm only using two elongated screws for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to go ahead and put that one up there and that one in the bottom corner. Long story short, 
I do have a little bit of a mistake here. I get the top left one, but the bottom right one doesn't quite go in and I'm kind of jumbling around with it. If you're wondering what that red SATA cable is for right above the fan is for the disk drive when the disk drive comes in a few days. So that's also going to be put back in the build, but I figured I'd do the rest of the build today so it's straightforward because not all builds use a disk drive and that's something that the world is kind of coming to embrace either you have an external one or an internal one whatever and we can go ahead and see that fan spins now for cables on the back it's all up to you guys now this case comes with a fan controller that has seven fans it has seven three pin connectors now I just take a simple cable tie just wrap it around the entire thing you guys can do cable management however you want it's not up to me, it's all up to you. Just do it however, it's in a little bundle there. All I did was pushed it up against the back panel, just like that. So I just kinda had it hang out. You take the side panel, wherever it may be, go ahead and put it back on, make sure there are no cables interrupting the direction of it, and then you're all good to go, and slap the other two thumb screws or screws on the back panel. Now for the reveal, this is the overall system build that we have here guys. This is a 3770K with 4 gigs of RAM and a GTX 960 and a Z77X D3H motherboard. I just went ahead and powered the system on. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the monitor here and, and boom, we have a posted computer. Now posted is power on self test. I didn't have a keyboard or a mouse connected to it, so I couldn't do anything at this point. But there you go. The BIOS was reset because I needed to install a new CMOS battery. And that's pretty much, pretty much it, guys. So that's how to build a computer. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.